Hello, everybody. Welcome to Life Questions. I am Bill Harris, your host. This weekly half-hour program provides answers to questions about life from a biblical perspective. If you have sent us a question or two, chances are it will get answered right here on today's program. And we've invited a panel of local pastors to join us with their expertise to answer the many serious, complex questions that you have sent us. And I want you to meet these people. First is Pastor Neil Whitney of the Church at Allentown followed by Pastor Dave Burkhardt of Westminster United Methodist Church. Then there's Pastor Ted Bible of the St. Mark's United Methodist. And rounding it off, Pastor LeBaron Cox of the Christian Cornerstone Ministries in Lima. And by the way, if you're interested in sending us your questions, we want you to stay tuned. We'll tell you how to contact us a bit later on in the program. Right now, let's meet our distinguished panel. Happy to have you with us, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. Good to be here. Well, we talked earlier about uh, who was going to start off first, and um, we've got the first question here, and I'd like to read this. It's an interesting one. It uh, comes from a Christian couple, and um, they say here, my brother and his girlfriend have been living together, and they want my husband and me to help them move. But we feel that if we do so, we are encouraging them to live a sinful lifestyle. So they go on to talk about they don't want to appear to be Christians who are perpetrating hate against people who, because they don't believe the same thing that they do, but they also don't want to be in a position of enabling people Amen. to sin. Amen. So, uh, Pastor Bible, uh, you're starting us off on this conversation. How do you deal with that type of situation? You love your friends, you love, you love your family, but right. you got to say no, is that it? Well, no, I think, I think you need to model what Christian love really is. And as we look back in the New Testament to the places that Jesus went, he went to a lot of places where there were sinful activities taking place. You know, we think about when he went and had lunch or dinner with Matthew. Well, there was a lot of other tax collectors in there. You know, and I doubt on that particular occasion that he converted all those tax collectors. Yeah, let's just mention, too, the fact that tax collectors were kind of like the scum of the earth back exactly. then. Exactly. <laughs> he did not, con I'm sure he didn't convert all of them on that particular first occasion. Uh -huh. You know, he won Matthew over, but there were others maybe who began <laughs> to follow, others who maybe came along later, and others who just didn't. But he didn't send out this, this, this message of displeasure or hate. And I think we need to be very careful about that, that we don't have, we can go and we can support them, we can help them, I believe we can help them move. Because if you don't help them move, then when they invite you over for Christmas dinner, are you not going to go? When they invite you over for any type of activity, are you not going to go? When you have them over to your house, are you going to say, well, you know, sister, you can come, but your boyfriend can't. Because where do you, I think that you're, you're, you're putting forth this message that we don't want to have any part of you. And I think as Christians we need to share that love and they may begin to see a different kind of love, a different kind of Christian love than what they what they witness on TV. Mm -hmm. they, Christians are labeled as haters <laughs> because we disagree with what other people may think. You know, and I think we just need to be people of love. You know, we need to support people in those kind of ways. It doesn't mean that we support their decision. It means we want to walk with them, we want to encourage them. We want to model what Christian love looks like. And I think that that's where I would go with that. Okay. Anybody agree, disagree? Or? <clears throat> My mother always taught me to hate the sin and love the sinner. And how does that shake down in this? That's a really context? fine line. It is. No it is. And it's really important that we don't compromise our beliefs. Amen. But yet on the other hand, we're built for relationship right. with God vertically and I believe we're built for relationship with horizontally with other people. Mm -hmm. I always let people know what I believe the Bible says. I can't make them change their mind, but I can certainly share the truth with them in love. That's what the Bible says mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. well, I, I, think, I think that's the greatest thing we can do is not to uh, leave our principles right. and our values. Absolutely. Let people know how we feel, what the right. Bible says, you know. Um, you can't always, you can't always uh, please people though. 
Right. And sometimes I think there's a time when you have to say no. Uh, this is... With an explanation? This, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, you, you may have to say, well, you know, I'm sorry. This is against my principles. This is against my values. I love you in Christ and, you know, wish, wish you the best, but I believe that I've got to, I've got to take a step back now. And based on what principle? That um, uh, living in sin, living common law is a sin. And the Bible tells us about fornication. The Bible teaches us about uh, marriage and how marriage is honorable and the bed undefiled, but God shall judge whoremongers, you know. So we, we have to take a biblical uh, stand on uh, our principles and share them in love as well as stand on what Christ has given us in his word. So yours and is God has given us in his word. So yours is that you can, you can love, but still say no when, when, Absolutely. when it's appropriate. Is what you, can, you, can, you can love and say no at the same time. Okay. So. Well, I believe obviously we're living in a culture that, um, that views disagreement or, um, or the fact that we don't all believe the same thing as hatred. And um, so we have to find a way to, to bridge that gap, mm -hmm. to be able to, to, be able to share um, truth with, um, without compromising the ability to do so. Um, if we just shut people down and say, no, we can't help you with this, um, we may lose the opportunity to witness to them. And I, so I believe that, um, that we need to be able to help this couple move so that we can share biblical values with them. Um, let them know for sure that we don't agree with what they're doing. Uh, we understand that the world says it's great, but we're not really to be of the world. Uh, we're definitely supposed to be of a different world and, and a different, uh, uh, different attitude than what the world teaches us is right. Okay, any further discussion? Well, we've got that. Yeah, I think that's good. All right. Well, we've got that one answered. Okay. Let's move on to uh, another one here. Uh, Pastor Burkhart, uh, this is one that you, you wanted to talk about here. It says here, I am not the best reader, but I really want to know how to study the Bible. And the person recognizes mm -hmm. that you can mm -hmm. do this, of course, through CDs, DVDs, and apps on your phone and the like. Uh, but really, is in a quandary. How, what's the best way to go about getting started? in studying the Bible. Yeah, well, first of all, we just have to make the decision to go ahead and do that. Make a commitment that we're gonna be in God's Word. Um, I share with my congregation on a weekly basis how much we need to be in God's Word because we can hear stuff from, from pastors and from teachers and, um, and it may not be right. We as pastors are fallible too. So, so I encourage my congregation to constantly be in the Word. And if you don't like to read it, there's other sources out there. Uh, other resources that we can use. Um, some of the things that I did mention were uh, DVDs and CDs that, uh, that teach the scripture. Um, there's actually uh, Bible apps that we can get right on our cell phone and uh, they'll actually read it for us. Uh, one of the things that I really like to do is I like to allow the app to read it for me while I follow along. Uh, Sometimes even in a different version of the Bible, just to kind of get a little different perspective on it. It's sometimes a little hard to follow that way, but um, yeah. So, uh, so there's a lot of different things that we can do, but, mm -hmm. but just truly encourage people to be in the Word and, and do so on a regular basis so that it becomes a habit. Mm -hmm. And once we get into it, oh man, it's so exciting that you want to continue. You want to <laughs> continue. Any other uh, suggestions, ideas? Yeah, I, I piggyback with Dave that first of all, you have to decide you want to do it. You have mm -hmm. to have some determination and desire to really want to do it. And then I think one of the first places is that, because I agree with everything, Dave, all those are good examples, but ask around your church, ask your friends, you know, do we have a Bible study at church or do you want to study the Bible with me? Can we meet together at the coffee shop 
mm -hmm. begin a study. Mm -hmm. Because doing it with somebody else makes it easier. Mm -hmm. It makes a commitment because we're going to do it every Tuesday at 11 o'clock mm -hmm. or whatever. You know, you can assign kind of homework, you know, like, well, bet between mm -hmm. now and when we meet again, let's read this chapter and let's think about that and pray about that. Let's talk about that. So, you know, doing it with somebody else is a great way to get started doing it. But in addition to the, the options that Dave suggested, you know, there's a, you can go on YouTube. If, again, if you have access to the computer, mm -hmm. you can go on YouTube. You can find Bible studies. Now, some of them I might advocate and some of them may not, <laughs> you know, but you got to find the ones that you're comfortable with but because there's some really good people out there mm -hmm. who do online Bible studies that can kind of help you, you know, learn from them. And so there's a variety of different ways to do it. But, man, you, you got to have a desire, first and foremost, that I really want to do this mm -hmm. and get started with it. I would, I would think that the first place you would go would be your local church, you know, for insights and learning about the Scripture because that's what it's there for. Your local church is there. Your pastor is there. And you should find a church home. You should find a church home, get involved, get in the word because uh, the scripture says man does not live by bread alone, mm -hmm. but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And, 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 and apply yourself because it's not all the pastor's job. It's not all everybody else's job. We have a responsibility toward God to study the word to show thyself approved unto God, a workman needing not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. So God expects us, God expects us to do what we can toward learning about his word and applying it to our lives. Mm -hmm. Praise God. When I was about 35 years old, uh, somebody reminded me that the Holy Spirit is a great teacher. Yes, yes. So ever since then, I've been encouraging people when they read the Bible to pray before they read the Bible and call on the Spirit to teach them as mm -hmm. they read. Mm -hmm. And I know that's radically transformed my ability to understand the Bible is to ask the Holy Spirit and you'll get to part. You just say, well, I just don't understand this. Holy mm -hmm. Spirit, help me. Mm -hmm. And it really helps. And he will. Really yeah. helps. And he will. Amen. And it seems like it, it, it's, it's kind of two faceted in that you must take the initiative and, as you said, ask the Holy Spirit to right. teach you. Uh -huh. Then I think about the other scripture that says that forsake not the assembling of thyselves together Absolutely. in the manner that some have yeah. so that you make sure that it, you're, you're not an island in that. Right. In that you come together because this is how you get that, that strength and um, What's the term? I can't think of it now. Will you get the reassurance from everybody else, the support that you need, I guess mm -hmm. is what I'm talking about. Support system. Yeah, this is a support and system. The one thing that I would say is, um, and I totally agree with Pastor Cox, that, that it, it does begin in the, in the local assembly of believers. Amen. Um, but, but if that church is not preaching from the scriptures, find one that is. Mm -hmm. Very absolutely. good, very yeah. good. I, I absolutely. believe that's just absolutely critical. And absolutely. there are a lot of churches today that are not. Mm -hmm. um, so, so definitely find that church that is mm -hmm. using biblical scriptures to, uh, to develop the messages that they're sending out. You know, I think another tool that can be used is uh, daily devotionals. You know, that's just a short little one page you know, devotional, you know, Our sure. Daily Bread is one. I mean, there's Absolutely. lots of these. Absolutely. But most of them also have a scripture yeah. reference with them, mm -hmm. you know, that can kind of guide and direct you. Yeah. And so that's an easy way to get started and it, that it provides an application mm -hmm. right into sure. the devotional as well. Absolutely. And so that's, that's one of the ways yeah. to, to I get started I think that was a well. great, that was a great uh, insight is Our Daily Bread because I remember mm -hmm. uh, before I retired that, you know, on the job, you know, you can't always walk around with your Bible in your pocket, you know. Right. So you get that daily bread and stick it in your pocket and flip it out on break time. And, and you, wham, you got something there that uh, you can get into and you can and God can work with you and and you can work with God's word. And so I think that's just an excellent, an excellent idea. Yeah. It's sure. I mean, I think one of the other things is to follow up with this question is, is the idea, so where do I start though? Mm -hmm. Do I start with the book of Genesis? Or maybe I should go right to Leviticus and start mm -hmm. reading that and, you know, or do I start in the Gospels? 
Mm. You know, mm. uh, where do where does where where does pastors or where do we encourage people to begin? You know, mm. if there's the, it's the first time you ever open up the Bible and you want to begin reading, where do mm. they want to read? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so I, I I'm a fan of the Gospels, <laughs> and I, I'm not picky about which one it is. You know, yeah. it can be Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. I don't care. But that's where, for me, to get started at, because you see Jesus, you learn about Jesus, the love, Absolutely. compassion of Jesus. And so that's why I encourage people. But I'd be interested in other people's thoughts about where they I encourage would, them. I would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Because you need to know about your Savior. Yes. And Indeed. although the, the Old Testament, is, the scripture says, is for our learning, but the New Testament just puts the rubber down on the road. Yes, <laughs> you know, how, I mean, where it's at. You know, the Old Testament is telling you how it all got there and how it all happened. Mm -hmm. But the New Testament is telling you the way it happened and who made it happen. Right. You know, so. All right. Well, listen, let's pause and take a break. And, and then I want to change the whole conversation. Sure. Uh, there's been some great concern and needlessly uh, sure. to say uh, important concern about trafficking, Amen. human trafficking human in this trafficking. country, in this country. So we want to pick that up and deal with it right after this break. Stay with us. Don't go away, there's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now, back to the discussion. All right, we're back and we're turning the conversation to something totally non-related to what we discussed in the first segment. Gentlemen, we want to talk about human trafficking. You know, about 10 months ago, I was in Thailand and I was there to perform a, a wedding. And we were told you know, there are certain districts you must stay away from because mm. of human trafficking and the like. Wow. Um, I've been to other countries around the world where human trafficking has been prominently displayed. And you would think, well, uh, not here in America, no, and, and certainly not here in the 21st century, but it is here. It is here. Yes, it is. And we know what the world is doing about it, but what, what should the church be doing about it? It exists, even on down to minors, children sure. that are being trafficked for money. Pastor, that's the thing that you said you had on your heart, Pastor Cox, sure, that you absolutely. wanted to discuss. Mr. Harris. Uh, Bill, Mr. Harris is my father's name. Okay, okay. <laughs> Bill. Um, we have a serious society problem and human trafficking is going on right before our eyes. I mean, we as the church, I mean, we're, we're praising God and we're singing and we're dancing, but you know, at the end of the day, the church can't be absent. The church has got to stand up and, and sound the alarm mm -hmm. and, and, and to make people aware. I'm, I'm, I'm talking not only law enforcement, they're doing what they can, but that what they can do. But we as the church, we've got to get involved. The church has been absent. And what we can do is educate our members in the church uh, addre help address the issue, be my brother's keeper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and when we get involved, uh, we can help to protect our daughters and our sons mm -hmm. and our grandchildren. But if it's not being taught from the pulpit and we're just expecting law enforcement to deal with it, that's, that's only half the issue. We've got, the church has got to be uh, uh, a beacon for people of, of uh, all kinds of issues in our society. And uh, we've got to stand and, and uh, <coughs> recognize the ills in our society and do all that we can to help. And I think the preacher's job is to sound the alarm and educate his members, educate uh, uh, the uh, church family 
of the do's and don't, you know, it's, it's better for people to stay in groups. Uh, if at all possible, stay in groups. Mm -hmm. Watch out for uh, uh, suspicious activity mm -hmm. and, and do what we can because we are our brother's keeper. Keep our children very close at our sides. Yeah, absolutely. In public places in particular. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. We've done a lot of mission trips to different countries and you learn very quickly that kidnapping is one of the ways that human trafficking is fed when yeah. you get to another yeah. country. Oh, absolutely. So you just have to be really aware if you get outside of this country, and there are places inside this country where you Absolutely. need to be very careful. That's care. That's, that that's correct. Kidnapping is, a, is the real thing. There are so many children sure. come up missing every year. It's sure. tragic. So that's one of the things we really mm -hmm. have to watch for. Pastor? Um, <laughs> we do a, a banquet every year, uh, Transport for Christ, and um, through some... Um, some folks in our church were able to attend that banquet. And one of the things that they really watch for uh, in the chapels at the truck stops is the human trafficking issue. Um, they've, they've reduced that quite a bit just by uh, letting folks know, if you see something, say something. Yeah, absolutely. Um, don't, don't try and stop it yourself for sure, um, but, but get some law enforcement involved in it. Uh, there's, there's just that necessity to, to reach out and to, to help those who can't really help themselves. Absolutely. And the unfortunate part of it is most of the time when there's human trafficking, there's drugs involved with that. Oh yeah. Sure. And uh, they usually get these young ladies or young men hooked on drugs and, and so it's, it's very difficult to, to bring them away from that lifestyle sure. because it's a lifestyle that they know and, mm -hmm. and uh, or, the, or it could be for sex trafficking. Well, it could, but. You know, but either way, yeah. Either way, uh, it's a problem that the church just can't hide from. We, the church has got to be diligent. The church has got to uh, make known the, the, the problems that we d deal with in society. And we as, as a whole, we can, we can overcome these problems if we work together. It's about working together and being my brother's keeper. Praise God. If folks aren't familiar with that, a background movie on it's called Priceless. It was made by King and Country. Mm -hmm. It can be found almost anywhere now. But it talks about how priceless people really are and how one man tried to make a difference in uh, human trafficking and did. So that's a good movie. It's called Priceless. Mm -hmm. right. We'll have to check that out. Certainly we'll have to check that yeah. out. Let's move on to another topic. Okay. Were you about to say something? No, no, oh, no. Okay. We'll move on to another topic now in topic number four that, that uh, you all said you wanted to talk about. This is a, another one of the questions that came in. Uh, my sister's son, who's in my nephew, she says, has a drug problem. And I feel like my sister is enabling him by allowing him to live at home and not expecting him to work. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to talk to her because she feels that she is enabling her sister and mm. by not helping out in this regard. Uh, drug issue is a problem that needs attention today and um, people today are enabling others that are on drugs mm -hmm. and she wants to know what, what should be done about this? How should uh, she confront this issue? Our drug uh, problem today I believe is uh, brought about by an older drug problem where we used to drag people to church. We don't do that anymore. <laughs> so it's a deterioration of the family is a major problem. Fatherless homes, just the culture we live in is really feeding into the drug problem. And people have been sold the lie that, that you can find fulfillment in your life, something other than a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I just know so many people that are, they're just floundering in, in the world's mess and Jesus is the answer. But you know, a lot of people today are struggling with prescription drug problems. Oh yeah. And the pharmaceutical companies uh, should be held responsible for the problems that we are having in our communities today. You know, when you're when I'm, I mean, I know a lot of uh, drugs like fentanyl is coming from China, 
but we also have our pharmaceutical companies right here in America who are spitting out opiates. Yes. I mean, painkillers yeah. to mm -hmm. people uh, just as fast as they can make them. And you know, and lawsuits have come about just absolutely. recently, just absolutely. lawsuits. They are now holding some of these companies absolutely. responsible. But go on, go on. And so we, uh, I mean, it, it's a problem for people who have physical issues. A lot of them have health issues and they need pain prescriptions. And so what do they do? They go to their doctors and they ask for help. Could you give me something for the pain? Well, you know, the doctor, uh, he's in cahoots, a lot of them, with the prescription people and the pharmaceuticals. And, and so now uh, we've, got, we've got problems on top of problems. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's something that, that our uh, government has got to get involved in because uh, it's just that it, the, the states just can't do it by themselves. And so, uh, you know, the opiates and the, you know, all of these, these illicit drugs coming into our cities across the border and through the mail system from China and wherever mm -hmm. is issues that we've got to address. You know, we've for, got to address those you know, issues. Far more people are dying of opioids in one yes, year than died in the entire Vietnam War Amen. era, 10 Amen. years, Amen. 10 years span. Yeah. And so that, that, that's really got to be, be addressed and, and, and the sooner the better. And the, like I said, the pharmaceutical companies are being held responsible. Now they're finding, for instance, like fentanyl, that it's coming in, as you just said, through China. And um, they're turning, uh, they're mixing it with heroin and other drugs. Absolutely. I think the church has to get involved, too, to the extent that we've got to deal with the appetite for these. Yeah. There's a market in this country, which is why they're selling it. Yes, it why is. Why they're able to sell, there's That's a market. Right. We've got to deal with that human appetite for these right. drugs. And then back to my original question, what about this guy that's living in his mom's basement? Okay. You know, and yeah. not being responsible for his own right. life as a grown man. Right. And you know what? Why would you allow an adult child to live at home and not expect them to work? See, I, I that, have, <laughs> I mean, I, I've, I've sat with some individuals who have been in that situation. Yeah. And I think the sad reality is, is that they let them live in their house because they know if they go out those doors, they're going to get into a situation with drugs again, an overdose, and perhaps death. Oh. Okay. And, when, and when they face that decision, do I let the kids stay or get an overdose, they're going to let them stay. Mm -hmm. And as a parent, I get that. There is yeah. not an easy answer, right. and it's not, right. I mean, until you've walked in that parent's shoes, it's very difficult yeah. to, okay. to understand that. Going to have to cut it off at that point. Boy, we really need to continue this, but we're all out of time. We will be back again with this, this illustrious panel next week, so join us at that time. I'm Bill Harris. Goodbye for now. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.